Uh, your father is in Iowa this afternoon announcing that he will again explore a presidential campaign. He has run in, in the past, and he is about now at least to start to run again. Uh, take me inside the kitchen table or whatever conversation you had with your father. There was some talk that maybe the new Senator Rand Paul might run for president. Obviously, I assume one Paul will be running, not two. Well, you know, the interesting thing is the Paul household in Kentucky is breathing a sigh of relief. My wife is quite <laughs> happy that it's Ron Paul running and not Rand Paul. She says she's had a, enough elections for a while. But, you know, I think this is a serious time and we have serious problems. And one of the things that my dad brings to the table that very few others can say is he predicted the housing bubble. He predicted the housing collapse, the housing depression. And he's also been a strong voice for constitutional foreign policy, not letting a president go to war without congressional authority. And there are very few other people who can say they represent that point of view. You, you worry at all? He's 75 years old. He would be 77 come election day worried to be the Republican uh, nominee for president. Does that give you any pause at all, his age? Well, the interesting thing is, is all the kids, we're worried that he beats us when we go for a bike ride or when we go for a walk, we have to tell him to slow down. So I think his uh, vigor and his, uh, his uh, intellectual curiosity makes him a, a much younger man than his years. If he had decided not to run, was there any chance, you having just won the election to the Senate, any chance you would have gotten in? Yeah, because uh, I want to be part of the national debate, and I see my election as an election that says, you know what, we have to do something about the debt. I see the Tea Party movement as wanting a seat at the table, so I will still continue to travel. I'll be in New Hampshire tomorrow, uh, I'll be in Florida the following day, I've been to Iowa, South Carolina, and I've been all over Kentucky. So we continue to get the message out there because I worry that we have a crisis looming in our country where we will have trouble paying our bills. Will you campaign, will you campaign with your father? Well, maybe some. And uh, even the last time around, I usually campaign separately because it, you get a little more done when you're not traveling together. Um, it allows me to go to some states when he's not there. And uh, so I think I will help as much as he wants my help. He is a guest tonight on our In the Arena program, which follows this program. And Elliot Spitzer interviewed uh, your father just before his announcement in Iowa earlier today. One of the questions he asked him was, why are some Republicans deciding not to run? Let's listen to a bit. Why aren't more Republicans getting in? Well, well I don't know. Um, they may be thinking they have to be cautious, and maybe they believe the president is stronger than some of the polls show. Mm -hmm. and, and the president is liked a lot. And, you know, in politics, being liked is very yeah. important. So maybe they don't think he's as vulnerable as the polls indicate he might be. Haley Barber yesterday, Mike Pence before that, several other Republicans have taken a pass this time. Uh, is President Obama vulnerable in your view? I think uh, extremely vulnerable. I don't meet anybody in the business community who's not upset most people in my state feel like he's the most anti-business president we've ever had. I would say people drop out, though, because the biggest hurdle is name recognition. The one thing, you know, Ron Paul in 2008, only about 1% or 2% of the people knew him early on. By the end, and by now, about 80% of America knows his name. So he has a much greater chance now than he did before. But many of these other candidates, even those who have been governors of states, are not well known across the United States and it makes it almost impossible for them to win. One guy who is very well known who will also be in New Hampshire tomorrow and I'm going up to see him and maybe we could arrange a meeting. I think that might be interesting if you're going to be in New Hampshire as well <laughs> is Donald Trump. And as you know at the CPAC conference, the conservative conference here in Washington DC, Donald Trump had some not so nice things to say about your dad. Let's listen. By the way, Ron Paul cannot get elected. I'm sorry to tell you. And you know what else? I like Ron Paul. I think he's a good guy. But honestly, he has just zero chance of getting elected. You have to win an election. You just came out of an election with the support of the Tea Party. Uh, if you don't bump into Donald Trump in New Hampshire tomorrow, when I do, any message you'd like me to give him? Well, the interesting thing is I was standing there in the, behind the curtain. I was going to speak. I spoke directly after Donald Trump. And my point is, you know, look, Ron Paul's won 11 federal elections as a Republican. Uh, I don't remember how many elections Donald Trump's won, but I don't think very many. I also think that the Tea Party may sour on when they find out Donald Trump 
gave $4,800 to Harry Reid in the last cycle, that his biggest contributor has been Charlie Rangel. He's given 24000 to Charlie Rangel. I don't see anybody in the Tea Party going for Harry Reid and Charlie Rangel. So I think it's a, a, a perplexing at best what's going to happen with his candidacy. Do you view him as a legitimate Republican contender? Well, I'm not sure which party he's registered with now. I know he's been registered with uh, many different parties throughout his, his history. I know that he hasn't voted in a Republican primary in 21 years. So I don't know. I think it's hard for an entertainer or a comedian to be, be treated seriously. And that's the big o o uh, hurdle he will have to overcome. And so we'll let the public decide that. But I'd say he does have quite a few hurdles to overcome to be taken seriously. Senator Rand Paul of Kentucky, we appreciate your time today, sir, and we want to close where we began, wishing you and the people of your state the best as you deal with some expected storms and floods. Thank you.